Hello, and welcome to the overview of Chapter 11, Sexual Reproduction and Meiosis. Sexual reproduction involves meiosis and fertilization. Meiosis is cell division that produces haploid cells. If you remember from the previous unit, a haploid cell has half the number of chromosomes, or one set. Fertilization is the fusion of gametes. Gametes are specialized haploid cells. The uh, fertilization produces a diploid zygote. So two gametes that are haploid will fuse together to produce a diploid zygote. The zygote will have half paternal chromosomes and half maternal chromosomes. The purpose for fertilization is to increase genetic variability. Sexual reproduction produces offspring by alternating between diploid and haploid states. The length of these states varies between organi organisms. For example, algae and fungi spend most of their life cycle in the haploid state. So most of their life cycle, these organisms here in the shaded area, going around to here, are haploid and they will carry out most of their life cycle in that stage and then two haploid uh, gametes will be produced and they will fuse together in fertilization to produce a diploid zygote which then goes through meiosis so meiosis does not occur here it occurs over here to produce the haploid organisms that then carry out most of their life cycle in that haploid state there are some plants and some algae that spend about half their life cycle in the haploid state and half in the diploid state. The classic example are ferns. You're familiar with uh, the ferns in the forest that look like this, but that is actually only a part of their life cycle, and that is the diploid state. Uh, usually on the back, if you turn the fern over on the back side, you can see these little brown dots. These are haploid cells, and they will go through mito mitosis to produce these haploid individuals here that are quite small, these little heart-shaped leaf-like structures, and they will produce haploid gametes through mitosis, not meiosis because it's already haploid. These haploid gametes will then fuse together in fertilization to produce a diploid zygote that grows into the fern that we're familiar with. So half of their life cycle is spent as the fern. The other half is spent in this haploid state. What we're most familiar with is the uh, life cycle of most animals and that is where most of the time is spent in the diploid state. So here we have a frog. Our frog is diploid. Um, most of its life cycle it's carrying out mitosis in all of its cells. Only the germline cells go through meiosis to form gametes. Sperm if you're a male frog, eggs if you're a female frog. They'll go through uh, fertilization and then that forms the diploid zygote, which then grows through the tadpole stage into a frog. Our life cycle is quite similar to this. Again, we spend most of our uh, life cycle in the diploid state, uh, only specialized cells in the testes and ovaries will go through meiosis to become haploid gametes. Those haploid gametes will fuse in fertilization to become a diploid zygote, which divides and grows through mitosis into a new human being. And then the cycle repeats. So meiosis occurs in sexually reproducing organisms from germline cells. Those are the cells found in the testes or ovaries of humans. They're referred to as germline cells. Meiosis is similar to mitosis, only it involves two divisions that end in four haploid cells. So you have a reduction from 2N, which is the symbol used for uh, diploid organisms, to N, which is the symbol 
used for haploid organisms. The phases of meiosis are given the same names as in mitosis. So you have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. We simply put a Roman numeral after each name to indicate whether it's the first division in meiosis or the second division. So we start with prophase 1. Prophase 1 has the same preparation as mitosis. You have the nuclear envelope breaking down, nucleoli is disappearing, chromosomes are condensing. Uh, uh, if it's an animal cell, the centrioles are migrating to opposite poles, and the spindle apparatus is beginning to form. Along with those things, you also have two other things that are occurring in meiosis. You have synapsis and crossing over. Synapsis occurs when during prophase 1 when the homologs will line up together and connect. They connect along their full length. That's what you see here in this illustration. These synaptonomial complexes, these little bars, will connect the paternal homolog with the maternal homolog. And remember they've made copies of themselves. So you have two identical sister chromatids for one homolog and two identical sister chromatids for the other connected at the centromere. So you end up with four chromatids. This is referred to as a tetrad. Tetra meaning four. Sorry, a tetrad. The purpose for this is called crossing over. Now this is also occurring in prophase 1. So this is crossing over. Okay, so they're connected together and that allows segments on the chromosomes to uh, switch from one chromatid to the next. So crossing over is an exchange of corresponding chromosome segments between non-sister homologous chromatids. So one paternal chroma chromatid, whoops, hold on. So one paternal chromatid will cross over with one maternal chromatid. There's no point in having the two copies, the two blue copies, cross over with each other because they're exactly the same, identical. But the blue and red, while they have the same genes, they may have a different form of the gene. We talked about that before. One could say blue eyes, one might be the code for brown eyes. So this segment here contains the same genes as this segment here, just maybe in a different form. So course, that's what we mean by corresponding segments will cross over. Now they don't necessarily have to be just at the end. You could have a segment right here cross over with a segment over here. All right. The amount of crossing over varies. There can be a lot, there can be a little. Here in this illustration they only show you two crossing over events. One occurring here and one occurring here between these two sister chromatids. These outer chromatids, remember, are still attached um, in this uh, synapsis and they could cross over as well. This illustration just has them sitting side by side so you can see the crossing over event easier. But remember they're actually connected like this. So you could have a segment right here crossing over with each other and then a segment between this chromosome and the one beneath it crossing over. So all four chromatids can be involved in this crossing over event. The sites or segments where crossing over occurs are called chiasmata. And I don't know if you can read that handwriting, C-H-I-A-S-M-A-T-A. -A -A. You'll find that term in your book. Those are the sites of crossing over. The purpose of synapsis and crossing over is to increase genetic variability. We'll mention genetic variability again in a little bit. So at the end of prophase you have the tetrads and um, they're still attached together and crossing over events have occurred. There may be a lot, there may be a little. It's random and it happens uh, differently every time. The sister chromatids from one homolog, 
Okay, so the this is one homolog here. So the sister chromatids from one homolog will end up being attached to one pole, while the sister chromatids from the other homolog will end up getting attached to the opposite pole. So when they're attached to the spindle at the end of prophase, beginning of metaphase, they become attached to opposite poles. This is different than in mitosis. So let's look at a comparison of how this attachment occurs. Okay, so on the left here is meiosis, and you can see just like I illustrated before, this red, red chromosome which with its two sister chromatids will be attached to one pole, while this homolog is attached to the other pole. So during anaphase one, the homologs separate while the sister chromatids stay together. In mitosis, the homologs are not together. Everything's lined up separately. Each chromosome is attached singularly in the spindle. So one sister chromatid is attached to one pole and the other chromatid is attached to the opposite pole. So the sister chromatids are pulled apart and go to opposite poles. But in meiosis, the homologs are pulled apart. The sister chromatids remain together. This is what reduces the chromosome number in half. You pair them up and then you separate the pairs. So now you end up with one set at one pole and one set at the other pole. So the first way to increase genetic variability we mentioned was the uh, synapsis and crossing over event. Now this is the second way and it's referred to as independent assortment. Your book uses the following image to illustrate this. Let's say we had a cell that has six chromosomes. One set, three chromosomes came from mom and three came from dad. So typically they represent the chromosomes that came from dad as blue and the maternal ones that came from mom as red. These cells in metaphase show you all the different combinations of um, assortment you can get during meiosis. So in this first example, all of the paternal chromosomes line up on the left and the maternal are on the right. Here you have the maternal on the left and the paternal on the right. And then the other six are showing you different, combi different combinations of maternal and paternal lining up either on the right or the left. So with a um, cell with six chromosomes can have eight possible combinations of lining up on the metaphase plate. So think how many, and you could probably do the calculation, how many different combinations can you get with a human cell that has 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs. This is independent assortment. This is why you don't look exactly like mom or exactly like dad, this along with the crossing over event, and you don't look exactly like your siblings. You can have a very strong resemblance to them if there was few uh, cases of crossing over or you had um, an independent assortment event that was very similar to your siblings, um, or you can look very, very different. So during anaphase one, the homologs, homologs are separated and pulled to opposite poles. The sister chromatids, again, re remember they remain attached to each other. So the result is a reduction from 2n, right, from 2n to n. Now you can see this in these illustrations because we started with a cell with six chromosomes, but after they separate, after this first meiotic division, each new cell is only going to have three chromosomes, half the number. They will be haploid. So that's why we refer to the first meiotic division as the reduction division. And this is what that anaphase 1 event looks like. You can see the homologs being pulled to opposite poles, but the sister chromatids are still attached to each other. 
You can also see that because of crossing over, the sister chromatids are no longer identical to each other. After anaphase 1, we have telophase 1. The nuclear envelopes will reform around each set of chromosomes. So each new nucleus now has, is haploid. The sister chromatids, though, are still together, and they are no longer identical. Now, before going into the second division of meiosis, the cells will enter a stage called interkinesis. Interkinesis, I-N-T-E-R-K-I-N-E-S-I-S. -E -E -S. This is the period between divisions. There's no DNA being copied, because the copies are still there. And this period can usually be, or, or usually is brief, um, but there are cases where it can be uh, long. The second meiotic division, or meiosis II, is called the mitotic-like division. And that is because it looks just like mitosis. The only difference is this is a haploid cell and not a diploid cell going through it. So prophase 2 and metaphase 2 are the same as in mitosis. The nuclear envelopes will disappear, chromosomes are condensing, sister chromatids are attached at the centromere, spindle will form. The chromosomes will be attached individually, not as tetrads to the spindle because their homologue is now in a different cell. And the anaphase 2, the sister chromatids will separate. So in anaphase 1, the homologs separated. In anaphase 2, the sister chromatids separate. Telophase 2, nuclear envelope will reform and cytokinesis follows. This illustration shows the whole process. We have a diploid cell that goes through, uh, first the chromosomes are copied, and then it goes through meiosis 1, forming two haploid cells. And then they will go through meiosis 2, and you end up with four haploid cells, and they're all genetically different. The genetic differences arise from the crossing over event, which occurs in prophase 1, and independent assortment, which occurs in anaphase 1. Be sure to check out the meiosis video on Blackboard, and thanks for watching.